Hey everyone. So this was supposed to be an RC hypercar video, but I've been traveling this month and some parts are on back order. But this is tangentially an RC hypercar related video because I print a lot of the parts for the RC hypercar out of a rather toxic polycarbonate or nylon. Last year I released version one of my ultimate 3D printer enclosure filter, which was surprisingly popular. After over a year of actually using the filter myself and living with it, I decided to make some serious improvements with a version two. Version two is much easier to build and maintain, which was really important to me. Uh, it's an all toolless design, so you can take the whole thing apart without any tools, and it's really easy to remove from the enclosure. Also, version two is backwards compatible with the inlet and outlet placements of version one. So it should be an easy upgrade for anyone that already has a version one filter installed. So first up, as I talk about in the original video, this filter is set up to create a negative or low pressure environment inside the enclosure. So it's always going to draw air in through any gaps in the enclosure and not let any of the harmful particulates or VOCs out of the enclosure. So to accomplish this, there is a diverter valve, which can be set to always exhaust some of the filtered air outside of the enclosure. The valve is also adjustable so that you can regulate the temperature inside of the enclosure. This setup has worked really well for me, but I found some issues when printing PLA and other low temp materials. I usually print with the doors to the enclosure shut and my enclosure is so well sealed that if I turn the fan to max, I'm just not drawing enough air through the gaps to actually cool the enclosure down. And in fact, it's actually warping the doors because the enclosure is so well sealed that there's pulling a vacuum on it. So to address this issue, I've added an optional flapper valve to be installed on the opposite side of the enclosure from the filter. Uh, the flapper valve is just held closed by gravity, but when there is low enough pressure inside the enclosure, uh, the valve will actually open up and start to draw fresh air into the enclosure. It's also a helpful visual indicator to show that we're creating some negative pressure inside of the enclosure and that all the airflow is coming into the enclosure so we don't have any leaks. I received a lot of feedback from the last video on version one regarding having the return air at the top of the enclosure and the inlet to the filter at the bottom. Um, this is because several 3D printing filaments will emit toxic VOCs which are actually lighter than air and will rise to the top of a chamber. But you can see the air inside of such a small enclosures like this is actually really well mixed. So I don't think this is a real concern, but I do agree that in an ideal world, we should have the filter inlet at the top and the return air at the bottom. So I went ahead and make those changes to the filter as well. To make the filter more adaptable to different enclosures, I've designed a variety of interchangeable inlet and outlet options for the filter. For example, you can use these interlocking sections to raise the inlet tube to be directly above the printer and try to capture more of those VOCs coming up off of the print bed. Or if you've designed your 3D printer to be more like a, a fume hood type enclosure, I have this straight upper section which accepts some two and a half inch inside diameter tubing that you can actually pull air from the top of the enclosure directly. Uh, I haven't actually tried this setup out, but if someone does, let me know in the comments how it works out. The last improvements are just to make the installation and maintenance easier of the entire filter. The filter now features toolless servicing, so you can change the activated carbon or the HEPA filter without needing to remove any screws. The entire filter and fan assembly can be removed from the enclosure just by lifting it up and out from these uh, tapered mounting flanges or mounting brackets. This was a huge improvement over version one, which was actually bolted to the enclosure and kind of was a pain to remove. Also building the entire filter is easier than before and it uses a lot less parts. There's no heat set inserts or any of that. Uh, it's mostly just M3, M4, and M5 hardware so you can just use some assortment off of Amazon. The fan mounting holes match up better than they did on version two with the particular brand of fan that I recommended as well. The diverter valve inside the actual filter housing itself that diverts air out of the enclosure is just installed with some M3 screws. I did make the diverter valve manually adjustable 
I found that I didn't need the automatic temperature adjustment with the, uh, the hobby servo that I was planning on integrating into version one. I, I left the mounting bracket for the SG90 servo, but if you do this, uh, you'll need to create your own kind of diverter valve arm. The housing for the activated carbon filter actually bolts to the top of the fan housing, just like this. I do recommend gluing a bit of nylon pantyhose like the mesh to the bottom of the carbon filter canister to prevent any of the really small particles of the activated carbon from falling through. Also with the airflow moving with gravity in this particular setup with version two, the carbon inside the filter is much quieter than it was in version one, particularly at higher fan speeds. Now I generally run the carbon filter housing about two thirds full. It's probably overkill, but for the amount of VOCs being generated from 3D printing, realistically, the carbon filter should last for several months of 3D printing, but the plastic snaps or hooks or whatever these are called, just install into the lower carbon filter housing with some M4 screws. And then the HEPA filter actually slides into the upper half of the housing and the whole thing just snaps in place. I've included a handy 3D printed drilling guide. This allows you to just mark the center of the inlet and the outlet holes, and then you can line up the drilling guide to mark for the M4 screws used to mount the air filter mounting brackets to the enclosure. The inlet and outlet holes are 62 millimeters in diameter or roughly two and a half inches. You could use a hole saw or I used a jigsaw to actually cut out the holes. Just to note, I only use three of the four holes for the U-shaped mounting brackets that bolt to the enclosure itself, but all of the inlet and outlet adapters have four holes. This just allows you to clock the inlet and outlet filter adapters so they can be set at different angles depending on the location in your particular enclosure you're gonna mount this filter. As for the material to print the filter out of, I recommend PETG for just about everything due to its temperature resistance up to about 60 centigrade or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. My enclosure is actually actively heated. So I actually use nylon and ABS for most of the parts, which is good up to about 90 degrees C or so. And that's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and put all this up onto printables.com and I'll have a link down below in the description to that website. I'll also include the CAD for this design as well. And hopefully someone out there can take this on to like a version three or even further. So as I mentioned, hopefully I'll get all the parts in for the RC hypercar and I'll have another video out for that in about a month. But until then, uh, stay safe out there.